Oh, wait. <laughs> Nina Kralchik will sing Lighthouse for Croatia at Eurovision 2016, and she is ready to guide all of you home and potentially guide Croatia to a win at Eurovision 2016. Never too dark. There's a lot of hype surrounding this young lady. The bookies have consistently had her in the top six or seven. Is it deserved? Can she win? Anyone can win. It's anybody's game. But Nina slays in the top, potentially top 10 of Eurovision 2016. Lighthouse has very subtle undertones. It really ministers to the, you know, sort of contemporary British pop sound at the moment. I'm thinking Foxes, Marina and the Diamonds. Ellie Golding, and um, it's not a bad thing. I think you kind of have to appeal to the current sound to get airplay, and with good airplay, you'll push albums, and with a good album sale, you could potentially win Eurovision. I don't think it can win. Um, for me, Russia is like the clear winner. Um, do I think it can go for the second place? Absolutely. I think it's really good. Her voice is incredible. I mean, we've seen uh, one live performance of her and it was really good. She can hit all those notes and there's a key change what keeps making it interesting for, I guess, all of us. So it's really good. Um, is it a Balkan song? Absolutely not. I'm getting the Icelandic feelings of mm. it. I really love Iceland this year, but I prefer this song and it's really weird. Um, and she is a person who really likes the nature. I mean, you can see that in the official video clip. There's a lot of water and stuff. And I can already see her in the snow with her big voice and just sing that song and be beautiful. And it would be great. So winning, no, but being awesome, absolutely yes. So <clears throat> when I first heard that it was Nina, I thought, oh, you know, it's going to be good. And then they announced it. And when I first heard it, I had quite big expectations and it still managed to exceed that for me. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think that this is now my number one for Eurovision 2016. Um, I love Nina, I think that her voice is great, I love the way it feels, I think it's got the best key change of Eurovision 2016. Yeah, it's just a really good, but live vocals incredible. My only minor concern about the whole thing is the fact that towards, um, Toward parts of that live performance that we saw, she was maybe a bit lacking in, in connection to the camera. I think that'll be fine. I think that they will work that through in Stockholm. I mean, they'll have so many rehearsal times that if they don't, there's a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, I think that the staging will be great. This is by far and away the best song Croatia have sent in years, decades even, as far as I'm concerned. Um, just really, really good. Now that bar may be low, but she's jumping so high, you could set the bar higher and she would still exceed it. Nina, 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 let me look at you and tell you this. I love that you have looked at those Balkan purists and said, I'm not going to send a Balkan song. I'm going to send a modern pop song that could have radio play in Australia, Croatia, China, America, Canada, you name it, she's there, you're there. I love that you're serving some Ellie Goulding realness, but making it your own. I mean, you're so edgy. You're the girl next door who would kick my ass. I I love it. Even in your promotional photos, you know, all these other ladies, they're going to try to be all high fashion and trying to be all mm -hmm. You don't pout, you punch them out. You got the piercings, you got the chic hair, the edginess, put on some leather, bandana, done. I love everything. And yet, despite that edgy avant-garde realness, she's giving us a light, a song that's light. There's like, I don't mean light as in no substance. I mean light as in airy, as in ethereal, as in I'ma put this on loop in my car, take me to my fantasy land. My one concern is that for me, the song becomes slightly repetitive towards the end, but I think staging and live vocals will solve that. That's just a matter of something being so perfect that when you remaster it, it's even more perfect. I think that on stage, as Chris pointed out, that live performance, she was amazing. So I'm feeling really optimistic. That was a mouthful. Oh Lord, why don't we give our scores? <laughs> give me yeah. the rest of my mouth, starting with Chris. So for me, this is a 9.5 and that 0.5 is literally just because of that 
ever so slight concern about how she will be on stage in, in terms of camera work live, but if she turns out, this should win Eurovision 2016, Zagreb 2017. Calling! <laughs> Her voice, a 10. This song, a 10. I don't know what the staging will be like, but I, I really think it will be good. Overall, it's a nine and a half, but with a great staging, it might be a ten. Yeah, but oh, mm. it's so good, really. Without giving you any subcategories, she's solidly an eight. I like the simplicity of her song. <laughs> I like the fact that she doesn't appear to try too hard, yet she's firmly in the competition. And yes, my Ernst and Young score is an eight. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I really love, love, love everything about Nina, from the looks to the song, to the styling. I think the staging, there'll be lots of water to the point that it's on the floor, it's on the walls, and she's like completely lost. And then, Score! Yes! And then light will come, uh. there will be an amount of their moment. Score! Yes! So, my score is a six. <laughs> now listen, the reason I gave it a six, I do love the song when I'm listening to it. But when I was trying to come up with my top three, I couldn't, I didn't remember it. And it's not because it's a bad song or that she's a bad performer. It's because this type of music isn't the type of music you instantly remember and think of. Like, Love Me Like You Do by Ellie Goulding. I'm not gonna instantly be like, oh, I gotta download that! No, but if it's on, I'll happily listen to it and love it and respect it. So that's my issue. I think that Nina's song is fantastic. It's just not the Eurovision winner for me. But if she wins, I'd totally be behind that. I'd be on that boat pushing the dinghy. I'd be like, here's a life jacket. <laughs> Done. Well, Titanic that's what you realness. <laughs> that's life what I jacket. That's more Norway. But y'all, <laughs> listen, the overall average across all 40 Wee Wee bloggers all over the world is an 8.12. That's Deserve. Norway. That's Deserve. It's very rare to get over a seven. So I wish our producer were the more enthusiastic. Uh, <laughs> and this is one over in it. Oh my God. <laughs> that's a lighthouse. Yeah, that's a lighthouse. That was not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, apologies. 8.12. Um, well deserved. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's what we think. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Can Nina guide Croatia to a win at Eurovision, or do we need to throw the girl a life raft? Let us know here on Weebie Blogs. And there will be way more videos, and if you subscribe, you will see all of them. And um, make sure to like this video. And bitch about what you've seen in the comment <laughs> section, because we love it when you do. And then bitch back to those bitchy comments. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> Bye! Bye.